Greeting to all of you, especially the parishioners of the Our Lady of Desert Conventual Church. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lenten seasons. The scripture reminds us about we uh, are invited to come out of our tomb, the tomb that prevents us from the love of God and the love of others. So let us begin our celebrations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the second mystery, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, to forgive us our sins, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May mighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which our love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon the land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial psalm. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the, With the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. 
I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, even if he dies, will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciple, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise to the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you led him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died. So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sisters, said to her, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did, not, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. We are at last Sunday of Lenten seasons, and we know that the purpose of having extra time in praying, doing sacrifices from fasting and abstinence, and being generous in almsgiving is to help us to know ourselves better, to close with God, and to show our concern to our brothers and sisters who are suffering in their daily life in a more practical way. The expectation to church for each one of us at the end of this Lenten season is to renew our faith, to enter a new life free of all sins, to reconcile the damaged relationship, and to live in the Spirit of God more than uh, we ever did before. So my brothers and sisters, the last four Sundays of the Lenten seasons, we have learned from our Lord Jesus Christ to be faithful sons and daughters of God, 
even at the moments of temptation, to become a favorite son or daughter of God by doing His wills, to become God's disciple by preaching His love uh, for all people, especially the sinners. And from last Sunday, to, be, to become God's healing instruments to those who are suffering from different kinds of illness in our society. So on this Sunday, the masters of all readings invite us to learn from our God by bringing new life to others. In the first reading, the author tells us that the chosen people had failed to live up to their covenant. to their agreement with God, and the consequence for that brokenness was that they had been taken into exiles. That was a time when they lost everything. Their city, Jerusalem, as well as the temple, were destroyed. And the life of being slave definitely brought a lot of suffering in their daily life. Everything seemed to be like death for them. However, in their suffering, God didn't leave them. According to the first reading, God as prophet Ezekiel came to his people and told them his promising words. I'm, I'm going to open your tombs. I shall bring you out of your tomb, my people, and land you back to the land of Israel. You will know that I'm God, O my people, when I open your graves and bring you out of your grave when I put my spirit in you and you live. I shall settle you in your land, and you will know that I, God, have done what I said I would do. So my brothers and sisters, we also listen to another dramatic story in which Jesus also called his friend Lazarus out of the tomb. And St. John tells us that when Jesus arrived near the home, of Lazarus, which is about two miles from away from Jerusalem. And Martha greeted him with emotion and disappointment because her brother had died and was buried four days as earlier. So uh, Jesus, just like his father, in the first reading, Jesus took this opportunity to bring the message of hope to both Mary and Martha. He, like his father, who brought the Israelite out of their tomb in the past. Jesus will bring Lazarus out of his tomb in order to tell Mary and Martha that he was with them in their loss, and also let them know that he, his divine power, which could bring death back to life. The powerful words of Jesus said on that day to Lazarus were important for each one of us to reflect today. Remember, he shout, come out, Lazarus. And then Lazarus came out, standing right in front of his family members and friends and in front of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is no doubt that people would believe Jesus is the man of God at that time. So Jesus today also called each of us by name out of our tombs, out of the ways of living that prevent us from being close to God's love and the love of others. The question we have to ask ourselves today is, do we want to come out of those tombs? And during this coronavirus pandemic, we like God's people from the past, we'll remind, we'll be remind, one, we'll remind one another that God does leave us during this time of panic and suffering. He will tell us like he told his people in the past. I'm going to open your tomb. I shall bring you out of your tomb of fears, of sickness, of panics, my people, and lead you back to the normal life, back to my protections. You will know that I am God, my people, when I put my spirit in you and you live. So may we like the people in the past, received the message of hope from the readings of today's liturgy of the word with the open hearts and believe strongly in the divine power of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who could bring dead back to life. So we will come to him asking for healing, different kind of healings at this difficult time of our country. May God bless you. Amen. Now please stand and let us say together the greed, the prophet, profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with your scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and who with Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of death and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our Lord, who always listen to our prayer, let us our, offer our petition to pray for our country, our church, our community, and also for ourselves. For the church, that God will transform our fears into hope, selfishness into love, and deaths into new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share in the Eucharist, that as we share in Christ's gift of himself, we will live the new life of the resurrection and give witness to Christ by our words and deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For all who have contracted the coronavirus, that God's healing spirit will ease their symptoms and restore them to health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will guide and inspire everyone working to curtail the virus and help them to employ proper hygiene, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For strength and courage, that God will inspire all who are searching for treatments for the coronavirus or are working to develop a vaccine for it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who must face death each day, particularly emergency personnel and hospital chaplains, that God will strengthen their spirits and help them honor the life of each person they assist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions recorded in our Book of Intentions, for the names recorded in the Book of the Dead, and for the special intentions of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, we offer you the prayer we spoke out loud here and also the, the prayer in the heart of the people at home. May you always be the source of the living hope. May you always lead us to uh, the pandemic with great faith. And we ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. My brothers and sisters, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and the glory of God's name, name for our good, good and, good and the good of his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of his sacrifice to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For us, true men, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raises him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. To him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, joy with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many of forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
at the Savior command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Well, the people at home, I would like to invite you to say the prayer with us, the spiritual communion uh, written by our founder, St. Francis Liguori, at this time. My Jesus, I believe that thou are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I de desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I thought you were already there. I embrace you and united myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be surrendered from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Now I would like to invite you to first, we can say the prayer to our Lady of Perpetual Help. Uh, ask her for her intercession to help us uh, uh, to be healed during this coronavirus. Martyr of Perpetual Help, with the greatest confidence, we come before your holy picture. We beseech your intercessions. We think of you, Mother, at the foot of your heart. Your heart must have fled to see your son in agony. But your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over our hours of evil. Mothers of sorrow, pray for us in this time of trial. Help us not to lose heart. Intercede for your people who are afflicted with the Lord of Christ. Comfort your people who are vulnerable and anxious. Protect health care for workers who put their lives at risk. Inspire our leaders to make good decisions. Change our hearts so that we may act responsibly. Teach us to trust in God's love and mercy and to share with you the joy of having courageously faced up to all the challenges of life. Amen. And also the Redemptress, we have a uh, blessed Francis Silos during the yellow fever uh, pandemic uh, happened. Uh, he was the one who really went out and served the people of God. So when he passed away and he became the patron saint uh, for uh, the, the, the period when the people suffered from pandemic. So we also uh, invite you to pray with us uh, the prayer to bless us. Francis Silos. Blesses Francis Silos. God sent you to minister to his people in the United States. His last congregation was afflicted by the distress epidemic of yellow fever, and you were a fellow victim with them. In taking care of the sick, you saw firsthand the terror, the hopelessness, the uncertainty of your beloved people. In this current battle against the coronavirus, obtain from God the courageous spirit and the hopefulness you always exhibit and share with others. Amen. And you have a good weekend.